This is Twit. I was just um, reflecting on the existence of RFC 1149, which is uh, dat- datagrams over carrier pigeons. <clears throat> yeah. And um, d- just reflecting on the, the way that uh, uh, many of the things that um, have changed the way we use the internet now were actually exactly that inefficient overlay going on. I remember when YouTube first came along, wondering why on earth anyone would want to play video over uh, a 2400 ball modem. And right. uh, it was it was that work overlaying video over the top of TCP/IP that pioneered a, basically an entirely new industry, and unfortunately corrupted everyone into, into thinking that uh, the internet was a medium for television. Um, right. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to, so, so having having laid that to rest, David, I've been fascinated the entire time since I found that I was going to be talking to you to find out why you Im- are embarrassed to be. Uh, recognized as the designer of UDP, because I would have thought that was a, a great thing to, uh, to to have on the back of your business card. <laughs> um, well, I, it turns out that a lot of people um, still do, um, in various ways, credit me with that, and I don't have to do anything about it. Um, a lot of people say I'm the main cause of the slash between TCP and IP, but... Um, which I was there, but I wouldn't say I was personally the main cause. I was just one of the, the people who fought for it. Um, I don't believe in the great man theory of history, to use a short term for this. Ideas are in the air. They're often invented many by many people in many places. Um, I can't always say where where I got the idea I had or even claim much credit for, you know, deciding, you know, for making the decision. Um, so that's what embarrasses me about, um, you know, this. I, I am, and, and the I guess the other part of it is that UDP is actually, the only thing UDP does besides the base level IP, which delivers datagrams, is it provides an extra level of addressing um, that allows a single host to dispatch, you know, the packets to, you know, whoever, you know, whichever process running on the host wants it or whichever program. So that dispatching, you know, th- that seemed, you know, that function was already in TCP. It's the only thing that UDP took from TCP was the port number idea. And so I didn't think it was much of an invention. What, what I'll, I'll tell you the way it really, you know, sort of really went down. There was a meeting. We finally, you know, got a consensus in the group that we were going to split TCP into two layers, TCP and IP. And those of us who were fighting for that split really for a variety of reasons, wanted to be able to send individual datagrams without sending connections. So we needed a connectionless protocol. Um, the word connectionless doesn't appear in the RFC, which is funny, but that's really what we were arguing for, was the ability to just send a message without any guarantee it would get there um, and with, you know, and put it basically push all the other functions in, out to the end, right? Figuring out who to send it to and all that kind of stuff. Um, handle reliability, handle security, all gets pushed out to the edge. Um, So we had to have a name for that. Um, And we called it the user datagram protocol because datagrams are connectionless. And, uh, you know, I I think I might have chosen the name, maybe. (laughs) But, you know, (laughs) the, the bigger the bigger argument was not, you know, was was a bigger argument, much much less than, you know, if you look at the, the spec, it's a little bigger than it originally was, but it basically was saying, well, I, we'll have this header on it and a checksum that, uh, and the header will uh, have the additional addressing information and the checksum is optional in case we knew, figured out a better way to <laughs> do a checksum. So even the optionality of the checksum was, was uh, kind of throwing function out of the network. 